Let's say that over the course of a few hours, the temperature on Earth dropped from the average 50 degrees Celsius to minus 250 degrees Celsius. Then certainly, the entire atmosphere would freeze and fall to the ground, forming an ice layer that would cover the entire surface of the Earth. But how thick would that layer of solid ice atmosphere be? Well, that is the main question that I am going to answer. So 75% of the atmosphere is contained within 10 kilometers above the sea level, and 99.9% .9 is contained within 100 kilometers above the sea level. So what is the mass of that entire atmosphere? Through pressure measurements, we know that the atmosphere of Earth exerts 100,000 newtons per square meter of surface near the sea level, which is 10,000 kilograms force. So per square meter of surface on Earth, there is a mass of 10,000 kilograms of the atmosphere. Now the vast majority of the Earth's surface is at the sea level, since about 70% of the surface is water, and the rest 30% of land has a mean height of 800 meters. At an elevation of 800 meters, the pressure is 0.9 bars, which is nearly the same as the one on 0 meters of elevation, which is 1 bar. Because of that non-significant difference, we can apply the calculation of 10,000 kilograms per meter square onto the entire surface area of the Earth. So by multiplying the amount of atmosphere per meter square, which is 10,000 kilograms, with the total surface area of the Earth, which is 510 trillion meters square, we get the number of 5.1 quintillion kilograms. So that is the mass of the Earth's entire atmosphere. The moon of Saturn, Hyperion, has pretty much that mass. And that moon is about 350 kilometers long at its longest. So in terms of a molecular amount, 78% of our atmosphere is composed of dinitrogen, which is just two atoms of nitrogen bound together. And 21% is composed of dioxygen, which is just two atoms of oxygen bound together. So 99% of the atmosphere just has two elements, meaning that just by focusing on these two different molecules, we can estimate the pretty much correct thickness of the atmosphere if it was ice. Sure, there is that 1% of gases, of which is mostly argon and a bit of CO2, and they would freeze, but I won't factor those in simply because they don't contribute to the overall number in any significant way. So by ignoring them, I will still get the overall correct number. First, let's start with moles. In this case, one mole is defined as something with 600 sextillion molecules. It can also refer to just 600 sextillion atoms. So our atmosphere is four parts dinitrogen and one part dioxygen. Now, dinitrogen has a molar weight of 28 grams, and dioxygen has a molar weight of 32 grams. That essentially means that 600 sextillion molecules of dioxygen have a mass of 32 grams. Now, since four-fifths of the atmosphere is dinitrogen and one-fifth is dioxygen, that means that the average mole in the atmosphere is 29 grams. So by dividing the total mass of the Earth's atmosphere, which is 5.1 sextillion grams, by 29 grams, we get the total number of moles in the atmosphere, which is 175 quintillion moles. Now, just for fun, let's see how many molecules that is. We can do that by multiplying the number of moles in the atmosphere with 600 sextillion, which is the number of molecules per mole, and the result is 105 tridecillion molecules. And simply by multiplying that by 2, since that is the number of atoms per molecule, we also get the number of atoms, which is 210 tridecillion atoms. That is the number of atoms in our atmosphere. So anyways, we know that there are 175 quintillion moles in the atmosphere. And since about 80% of the atmosphere in terms of molecules is nitrogen, that means that 140 quintillion moles in the atmosphere are nitrogen. And obviously the rest, about 35 quintillion moles, are oxygen. So by multiplying that number of nitrogen moles with mass per single nitrogen mole, we get the total mass of nitrogen in the atmosphere. And that is 3.9 
quintillion kilograms, which is 77% of the total mass of the Earth's atmosphere. Now, a single mole of solid nitrogen ice has a volume of 27 centimeters cubic. So by multiplying the amount of nitrogen moles in the atmosphere, which is 140 quintillion, by the amount of volume that each of those moles takes up in an ice form, we get the total volume of nitrogen ice that would be formed on the surface. And that is 3.8 quadrillion meters cubic. Now solid oxygen ice per single mole has a volume of 22.5 centimeters cubic. By multiplying the amount of moles of oxygen in the atmosphere with volume per single solid oxygen ice mole, we get the number of 780 trillion meters cubic. Together, oxygen and nitrogen in total would form 4.68 quadrillion meters cubic of ice on the surface of the Earth. To get a bit of a perspective on how much that is, the volume of 4.68 quadrillion meters cubic forms a sphere that is 208 kilometers in diameter. That right there is the atmosphere of Earth in an ice form in a sphere, compared to the entire Earth and the Moon, and it is quite visible. Now that is just the frozen atmosphere in its totality. To get a clearer picture of what would be formed on the surface of the Earth if the atmosphere were to freeze, we need to divide the total volume of the frozen atmosphere, which is 4.68 quadrillion meters cubic, by the surface area of the Earth, which is 510 trillion meters square. And by doing that, we get the number of 9.2. So per square meter of surface, there would be about 9.2 cubic meters of the frozen atmosphere in the ice form. So we now know the thickness of the ice layer that the atmosphere would form if it were to freeze. That in the image is a human of a fairly regular height compared to the height of the ice layer that would be formed. Now we also sort of know what the color of that frozen layer would look like, and that is mostly white, since frozen nitrogen is white, and nitrogen accounts for the vast majority of that ice layer in volume. It accounts for about 80% of the volume of the ice layer that would be formed. So nitrogen contributes about 8 meters of thickness in ice to the ice layer. Still, oxygen ice is actually quite blue, so we could expect that in some cases, a distinct blue hue would be visible to the ice. Now the rest 1% of the atmosphere that would be frozen wouldn't contribute a significant amount to the layer at all, so they wouldn't give off a distinct coloration to the ice. On top of that, most of that 1%, just like nitrogen, in a solid state is white. Now the estimate of 9 cubic meters of solid atmosphere per meter square is just the atmosphere in the ice form. In reality, there likely would be as well some snow in the beginning, if the atmosphere were to freeze, which would make the solid atmospheric layer even larger in volume and therefore thickness. The difference between ice and snow is that snow is really just less dense ice, a more fluffy ice. But as time passes, and as gravity acts, the snow would bundle up, and ultimately it would just compress into ice. And then the surface of the Earth, on average, would be covered with an ice layer that is about 9 meters thick. 